Oh no. So, who fancies making a fort? So, here we are, we're gonna make a castle or a fort, whatever you wanna call it, a child's play area. Uh, basically, we're gonna be using these half round stalks, uh, making up three panels to begin with, the front and two sides. Uh, we can worry about the back later, but lay them all out to the length that you want. These are six foot posts, which I'm quite happy with for the front. Um, and I'll then mark out where the doors and windows want to be, cut those, and then it's just a matter of screwing it all together. Right, so I've laid out all the planks. This is for the front. So I need to cut out where the doorway is gonna be and see if we can cut out for some windows as well. Nice uh, arch tops on the doors, which is a little bit tricky to draw out. So what I've done for now is I've measured up from the base. Uh, I've gone four foot up, these are six foot poles. So I've gone four foot up to the peak of the door and then I wanna arch that down to a three foot space, which is here. Now it's quite tricky to draw on these half rounds. So what I did uh, to mark off this side, as I've done this one, is to mark off a straight line to know where that should be. And then on the middle of these three posts, I marked off an extra inch further up to give me that curve as I go through. And then it's just standing above that space to make sure that the line matches up where you want it to be. Okay, so first thing, never be scared to adapt your plan. I was going to go six planks wide to make the doorway, but systematically going through, cutting the first pair, cutting the second pair, and moving out from that center line, you realize that actually four planks is definitely wide enough. What you might sketch out might not be what it looks like in real life, even if you sketch out as accurately as possible. Okay, so never be scared to adapt your plan. So the next part is to cut out the window, which can just be done out of one beam. So I've gone four foot from the bottom up to the top, marked up a little V for the top of the window. And then at a two foot marking, we'll chop it off there. So we'll keep this bottom section We'll lose this middle section and then we'll keep the top section and put it all back together again. Always remember to sever the bottom corners before going all the way through. Makes it less likely to have a great big nasty tear where you don't want it. We go and get a nice clean cut. Ooh, a bit of oil on there. Quite difficult to eye up. That's all we're really doing is just eyeballing. We've measured off. I've got a two inch triangle marked off here. So we've got the four foot gap that we measured originally. I've gone down two inches at either edge and just eyeing it up. I've tried to draw the line on, but it's very difficult with these semicircles. It's just trying to establish the cut. Do you know I'm basically a workshop? Let's get that cut working for us. And slowly tilting the saw up. So we're trying to get the blades to run vertically at the point. Yeah. And then come at it from the other side. Well, I'm, happily, I'm ambidextrous, so I can switch to a left-handed saw. If you can't do that, it does get a little bit trickier. Again, just trying to establish that cut to begin with. A little bit tricky because it's rounded. Ok, 
careful, I'm going to slightly undercut this side. Just getting caught, there we go. And we'll just go in with that, just clean that corner up a little bit. No problem to do that with the saw. Lovely. Well, there we go. So the front face is about ready to be assembled. So we've got the, the windows and the doors cut out, which then means there's obviously flappy sections that aren't attached top and bottom. So you can see how that would be loose. It would only be attached to the base. So this is why we need braces going across the bottom of the windows and one across the top of the windows and the doors. So now we've got to turn everything upside down, attach those buttons to the back. Ah, joys and joys, screws and screws. Let's make a fort. up the bottom we're using this top brace now I need to put the top brace in place uh, I've measured that we're definitely 3.6 from the top so you can see I need to go up a smidge with this one let's put that up to there that's it beautiful okay Try and make sure we remember that when this panel is folded around the side, which would be almost going underground in this shot, uh, we'd need the thickness of this beam overhanging from here. So that would touch onto the back of the beam and then the edge of this post would come up to here as it runs down that way. So this side panel isn't going to have any windows because it's just going to be up against the fence. I'm trying to sort out the slope so that it has a six inch slope down towards the back. Trying to get the tops sorted first, then laying out those beams in place, and then we can cut the bottom section off flat afterwards. So just marking off there with a pencil, because of course this is all gonna have to get taken apart, and we need to know where those straight sections are. So we can mark off where the beam's gonna, gonna sit, and then we get to flip it all upside down again. Also mark off where the beams need cutting. And moving over, so we need to do the same at the other end as well. Marking off where that beam needs to start, because again we need that little gap to fit the beam from the front section. And exactly the same all the way around at the top as well before we get to flip it all upside down and attach it all on the back. Here we are, flipped up the right way around. We can see now that we've screwed in just one at each end, all in line, 
nicely taped off at the top using that other beam. So now we just need to screw in all of those posts and then we can saw through to straight line that bottom edge. Leaving the top end all spiky and lovely, ready to fit the side of the castle. So once we've made one side, we can then do the other, but this time we're going to put some windows in, which might save us a couple of planks. It also means we've got something to already measure off, so the second one should be a little bit easier. So creating the slope in exactly the same way as we did the other side, and then marking off the windows exactly the same way we did the doors and windows on the front. Done a two width in the middle, and then one either side, taking into account that slope. Well. Good morning from inside the fort. Yay! How good is that? Now then, last night, just so we got a, a really good place to finish, I used just a block in the corner uh, just to get the sides uh, put up so it looked nice. as a nice way to finish your day off. Um, I don't like that corner though. That's not gonna be good inside a kid's playpen, okay? Uh, so what we're doing this morning is we're cutting these in half. I've done one of them. Um, just to triangulate it instead so there's no nastiness coming through okay so that's the next job just to tidy it up make it a little bit safer inside um, obviously as you've been going through building this checking that there's no screws or nails or anything like that poking out anywhere at all really make sure that you've checked this over okay right let's crack on then so we can see here once we've triangulated those little corner braces uh, there's no sharp edges anywhere you can also see here why we set back this side brace for the, the side panel with the windows on and on the opposite side as well so that it fits nicely up against that front panel in the corner. Now the eagle-eyed among you may have spotted that we're missing the back panel here. Uh, that's done quite on purpose. Uh, it's, once it's up to this stage I don't want to be crawling through that little doorway. It's great for kids. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the bum as I need to be on both sides to fix this out. So I've purposefully left the back panel off. Uh, we'll make that in situ as we go through. A little bit different to the other panels, uh, just as a way of saving a couple of quid. Um, I've just braced it along the bottom for now, just so that those back panels can't splay apart. But that's why it's missing. Right, I think turrets are next. So the turret's gonna look like this when we're done. So let's figure out how we've done that. It's not very difficult just a little bit of measuring and cutting. Right, so here we go for the four turrets. Now this centre patch here, we've kept the fork on the top, that nice little spike, and that measures about two foot tall completely for that one. As we then grade down the edges, uh, we're trying to keep them the same, and we've got a 17 inch length down here. And again, like we had earlier on, we've got a two inch drop to create the angle at the top there. So that does slope down. This one comes in at about 14 inches, again, with the same slope and exactly the same for that one and that one. All we need to do now is screw it up to wrap it round that corner. So remember while we're cutting the angles off that I've measured up from here for one of them, I can cut that angle and then that exact same angle works to measure off that way for a flat cut at that end. So we've got to screw these in from the outside. There's too much wood on the inside. With the beams being there, you'd need exceptionally long screws. So we'll just do these from the outside. Uh, what we are going to do is measure down uh, 13 inches down there, which gets the first screw hanging towards that beam as well. 
and we'll put the second spool through to really make sure that that's stable. So I'm a little pencil line down here so I know I'm at the right height. And then this is going sit and square. So you see with the flat edges on all these round ones, it's just going to sit square into those. It is exactly the same on the corners as well. And it's just a matter of trying to get the screw in. Now it can be a little bit tricky because we've got to get the screw in first. Just to get it in. And then I'm going to push that screw over a little bit. What I want to be doing is making sure that this screw is going to head into a deep section of wood. If you find that it's heading towards the thinner patches, you can just change the angle of your screw as you go in, and really making sure that there's no sharp screws poking out the other side. Put one of those in, we can do the same for the next one. On the height, so heading up. Again, just making sure that the height of the next screw is just underneath where these pitch marks are. A little bit tricky to start it off. And then eyeballing where straight is. And there we go. And then it's just a matter of doing the same for a pair on this side and then working out where from the others. So with the turrets in place we can start fitting the roof which is just a piece of plywood cutting out to size nail it down the sides and then we can start fitting the back panels in so the back panel will be made up of the half rounds because we've got loads spare because we had to buy them in packs um, and they can go up and fill that back edge and you can see it's been played in even before it was finished <laughs> so it's time to felt the roof a um, bit of a tricky one because the sides go up along here. Normally with a shed roof you'd be able to fold the fabric down over the edges but we can't do that here because of the spikes. So what I would do is have just a little bit of overlap there and I'm going to pin that down and I'm going to screw the beam down to really kind of push that in tight to make it as waterproof as we can uh, just to protect that plywood surface. Just a little tip as well. When you're putting felt on, if you've never done it before, always do the first, the lower levels first. So then when you put the second layer on to fill the top, it overlaps the right way around and water doesn't get to come underneath, okay? And of course, every castle needs a flagpole. So there we go, one finished castle fort. Which kid wouldn't want to play in there? or adult for that matter. Click like, subscribe, and we'll give you more weekend projects next week. Bye for now.